What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Sean here and today I'm going to be showing you my three favorite Benchmade knives. I only have five Benchmades in my collection, however, they were all good enough to maintain their spot. Out of them, my three favorite are the ones sitting in front of me. And one thing that you'll notice is minimal customization, especially compared to my Spydercos. Now, that isn't due to a lack of aftermarket part options. It's just that, well, I really like them the way that they, just the way they are. They come from the factory, well equipped, um, the designs, the materials, the textures, you know, the combination of everything really just works out well. Um, so although these knives are priced a little bit steep, I'm saving some of the money on the aftermarket parse options that I would be spending um say when it comes to spider codes now i'll still recommend and i will buy a spider co knife over a benchmade knife 9.9 .9 times out of 10. all right but i have to give credit where credit's due and these three models are truly amazing i have absolutely well i can't say nothing bad to say there's really only one major gripe I have with Benchmade, well, which turns into two or three or four, but it all kind of stems from their Omega Springs. Now, you'll hear mixed opinions about this, mixed experiences. Some people will say, oh, I've had Benchmades for decades, never broken Omega Spring. Well, 
I've owned Benchmades for several years and I've broken Omega Springs on at least 50% of them. So it's not a uncommon thing by any means. Uh, if you if you flick your knives a lot, which with Benchmade knives, I mean, let's be real. The access lock is a fidgety mechanism. You're not going to be able to help yourself from flicking the hell out of these knives, especially if you, uh, you know, haven't really experienced a access lock before. So if you're uh, popping your access lock cherry, you're gonna be flicking the shit out of this thing. Chances are you're gonna break an Omega Spring eventually. So uh, that leads to the next issue, which is Benchmade's warranty. And it's not that they don't cover the Omega Springs, because they do. But they want you to ship your knife out to them. You have to wait for them to do the work and then ship it back to you. Plus, you have to pay for that shipping, which is a bunch of bullshit in my opinion. Uh, I really, really wish they would just send you the Omega Springs. You know, I don't care if I have to pay for them. Just, I, I don't want to send my knife out. When it's something that I can easily do at home in two minutes. And that whole problem led me to creating my own solution, which is making my own Omega Springs. And I have an example of one sitting right over to my right. Here you can see. This is one that I'm not going to use because... If you look closely, it has a bunch of like little marks on it and stuff from the pliers that I uh, grip it with to make the bends and everything. So this one is a little bit rough, but essentially I could throw this in as a replacement and it will work. Um, but just the fact that I can make them better than this one right here, that's why I'm not going to use this one. But yeah. Not hard to make. It'll take you a couple tries to, uh, you know, kind of get your, get it all figured out. But with a little bit of practice, you can make your own or you can purchase your own off of Etsy, Amazon, eBay, wherever. And, uh, you know, can't, can't really go wrong with any of the ones you order online. I mean, they're going to work. And ironically, you would think that the manufacturer made Omega Springs would be the most durable and the best performing. However, I have never had a set of Omega Springs that I made or bought aftermarket fail on me. Only the ones from the factory. So that is kind of frustrating. But, uh, you know, besides that whole slew of problems, issues, whether, you know, you want to blame the user for over flicking it or whatever it may be, you know, eh, whatever. So I, it doesn't really matter whose fault it is at a certain point. If it becomes enough of a nuisance to the customer, it's going to be a turnoff. And that's what it was for me. But aside from that, these knives have a whole lot going for them. Um, I'm not going to make this a full review about each of these knives, but I will tell you the features that really makes me love each of these knives and um, what kind of gives them their individuality. So I'll start with my favorite out of the three, which is the Benchmade Bailout. This one, I have, ever since it first came out, I pretty much was drooling over this thing and I just never pulled the trigger on it because I couldn't stomach $270. I thought it was priced way too high. And uh, I mean, I still, in my gut, like natural instinct, do feel like it is overpriced, but I gotta be honest, Getting this in hand, using it, carrying it, and loving it for months and months now, 
I, I'm starting to uh, kind of come around on that opinion because you have some really, really nice, uh, th these are aluminum scales, which uh, typically I'm not the hugest fan of aluminum scales, but they can work very well. I mean, look at Microtech, the SOCOM Elite, one of the most badass knives ever made, aluminum scales. They work extremely well. So, um, I'm, or the original Benchmade 940, aluminum scales work extremely well. So, there's no problem when it comes to aluminum and knife scales. And the fact that it has this texturing and these are actually contoured, it's very thin, but it is very, very comfortable. It's also extremely light, very slim, and carries like a feather. You do not even feel this in your pocket, and it is a full-size, extremely capable knife. Another thing I really love about this knife is how well it cuts. This thing is a slicer. Look how thin that blade stock is. And with it being M4 blade steel, this thing is nice and tough not gonna have to worry about it breaking on you and it just cuts like a freaking champ um another reason i really love this knife and carry it so much is because it's my most practical um best performing tanto blade knife in my entire collection um on a practical edc level with it being such a good cutter, carrying so well, uh, this really just checks a lot of boxes and it is really hard to keep this one out of pocket. So, props to Benchmade on this one. If you haven't checked out a bailout, I highly, highly recommend you check one out. Um, and if you don't want to take a chance on dropping that $270, you can always go to a knife dealer and check one out in person or you can do what I did and find one on the secondary market. I like doing my shopping on the buy sell trade post in the Spyderco Millie PM2P3 club, which is a Facebook group. Uh, really great guys over there. They have a daily buy sell trade post uh, and you can find incredible deals. I found this one like new in box. It was carried maybe once, still in perfect condition. Factory sharp edge for $175. So $100 less than retail. Couldn't turn that down and that was money incredibly well spent. Couldn't be happier with this knife. Next up, we have Benchmade 940. I think I've gone into this on uh, several different videos why this is such an amazing knife, but it's kind of similar reasons to the bailout. You know, you have a very slim, light package, very easy to carry, very comfortable to carry, very comfortable in hand, and it gives you a lot of capability. Um, no, it's just it's an amazing knife. If you have not checked out a Benchmade 940, I urge you to do so. I think it's a knife every knife guy probably either does or has had in their collection. And if you haven't had one in your collection yet, you're missing out because this is really a piece of knife history or modern knife history, um, in my opinion. And then last one up, this is another one that I had been, you know, eyeballing and drooling over, looking up reviews on, um, just, you know, going crazy lusting after for a long time and never pulled the trigger on it because I either, you know, didn't have the funds or something else just won me over you know i for a long time i bought a lot of 
there was a lot of spider kills that I wanted just a little bit more than this. So I just never got around to pulling the trigger on it. And then it became discontinued. And it was, you know, really difficult to get your hands on one of these. But I ended up coming across a really sweet deal in the Millie Club. Couldn't turn it down. And this has also became one of my most carried knives. Um, one thing about the Griptonian, I will say, one of the most comfortable knives in hand that you will ever come across. It's a little bit fatter, but it is also ca contoured, a lot of roundness to it, and it fills out your palm really nicely. So you just have a lot of control, really good grit, hence the name Griptonian. I love the 550-1, um, which the blade is the same as the Benchmade 550, which is a full-size Griptonian with the sheep's foot blade with the hole for deployment. However, the regular 550 does not feature the 20 CV blade. That one comes in S30V, which is also great. Benchmade does a great job with their S30V and uh, you can get those, they're readily available. Uh, one other difference between the standard 550 and this is this one features the two-tone or dual-layered G10 and the open back construction with the blue standoffs. And uh, yeah, so this one looks really nice, feels really nice, and it cuts well, and it's just a really great knife. And I don't believe I've done a full review on this, so I'm not going to go into any more on this one, but amazing knife. Uh, if you come across the deal on one, do not hesitate. You will not be disappointed. Uh, I can assure you, all three of these knives will stay in my collection forever. Um, and I'm not, I'm by no means a Benchmade fanboy. You know, I always call things how I see it. I call it how it is from my perspective based off of my experiences. No, I'm not telling you to take every single word that comes out of my mouth as fact. This is just the way that I see things and how I feel about it, what I believe, you know, my opinions, my thoughts, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, you know, I don't expect everybody to agree with me and that I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm just sharing my insights, guys. So, anyways, if you got something out of this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Let me know your opinions on these knives. Uh, if you agree or disagree, whatever, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on these. And thank you all for being here. So, I appreciate you guys. Thank you all for watching. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. Stay tuned and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.